Mr. Speaker, first I would like to thank the members who have spoken for their support and comments on this bill. Engineer Li Bihua, Mr. Gan Tian Po, Ms. Joan Pereira and Mr. Louis Ng have spoken on helping existing and would-be plumbers to continue to serve in this important trade and facilitating their entry into the new licensed plumber scheme. We share this important objective. Let me first address the issue of providing sufficient time for transition to the new scheme. PUB announced its intention to roll out the new licensing scheme some 10 months ago, in April last year. Even prior to the announcement of the scheme, PUB had engaged the Singapore Plumbing Society extensively. After the announcement, via several media channels, newspaper, radio, TV, and including the vernacular as well as circulars, weekly public briefing sessions were held for 10 consecutive weeks to share details with interested stakeholders. All of PUB's licensed water service plumbers and members of the Singapore Plumbing Society were invited to the sessions. Other plumbers and members of public also attended the sessions. To facilitate the transition to the new scheme, additional runs of BCA Academy's Builder Certificate course and PUB's short in-house conversion course were mounted. As noted in my opening speech earlier, to date, over 96% of the 863 existing plumbers who are either licensed water service plumbers or plumbers registered with the Singapore Plumbing Society have already obtained the qualifications to become licensed plumbers when the legislation comes into effect. And in fact, among the 800-odd uh, who would qualify, actually a significant number, more than 70%, we estimate, are age 50 and above. And among them, there are plumbers who are in their 80s, but who were qualified to become LPs. Of the remaining plumbers, around 10 will complete the builder certificate course by the middle of this year, and around 20 will need to successfully undergo PUB's two or three days in-house conversion course. Additionally, as noted in my speech earlier, another 25 who have the requisite experience but were neither licensed nor registered with SPS have completed the necessary courses and will be able to become LPs when the Act comes into effect. So essentially, this will be the new, uh, the plumbers with the requisite experience but with no license and they will be uh, licensed when the Act comes into effect. During the six month transition period, water service plumbers and those currently or formally registered as sanitary plumbers with the Singapore Plumbing Society may continue practicing their respective trade pending their license. For those who have not completed their licensing requirements by the end of the six-month transition period from the effective date of the legislation, they can approach PUB who will assist them on a case-by-case -case basis. While we encourage and help as many as possible to upgrade their skills and be certified, there continues to be a role for those who do not have the new license. First, they can carry out plumbing works as long as they are directly working under a licensed plumber who will manage and sign off on the works. Second, they can carry out non-critical simple plumbing works for consumers on their own, such as clearing chokes and installing sinks, bathtubs and showers. And there will continue to be a market. There will continue to be a market for such work, and a full list of unregulated works can be found on PUB's website. Ms. Pereira, Mr. Gan, Mr. Peng, and Mr. Ng expressed concern that some plumbers, especially the older ones, may have difficulties getting certified due to language requirements or financial difficulties. Sir, in Mandarin, please. 
必须懂得基本英语，才能够了解相关的法规和建筑设计图，并向公用事业局呈交所需的表格。虽然这些必备课程是以英语进行，讲师会通过示范，帮助学员了解课程的内容。公用事业级的课程长两至三天，学员如果无法应付此课程的笔试，也可以选择接受口试，以其他语言，例如华语，考取证书。除此之外，公用事业级也与新加坡建设专科学院合作，以确保新技能资格的。职场英语和数学培训课程，四级文凭被接受为建设局证书课程的最低申请条件之一。资金与公用事业局接洽过的水匠，都表示愿意报读这项新技能资格课程。我在此分享一个个案。今年五十岁的张李瑞先生，曾受雇于几家从事水管与排水管工作的公司，目前是自由身的水管工匠。当公用事业局去年四月宣布新的水匠制造计划时，张先生也曾担心会因为自己的英语水平不高。而不能报考建设局的证书课程。最后，张先生不止报读，并通过了职场英语和数学培训课程四级文凭的测试，也已完成了建设局证书课程的理论部分。他将从今年三月起开始证书课程的实践部分。受访时，张先生对新加坡水卫生水喉协会和公用事业局给予的协助表示感谢。So in English, as for financial assistance, PUB waives the fees of its conversion costs for all existing plumbers on their first attempt, and beyond that on a case-by-case -case basis. For the builder certificate cost. A variety of subsidies may be used to offset up to 85% of cost fees, such as the Skills Future Mid Career Enhanced Subsidies, and individuals can also use the Skills Future Credit. Most plumbers whom PUB has engaged thus far have no issues with the cost fees. Nonetheless, if plumbers face any difficulties, I encourage them to contact PUB, and we will see how to further assist them. Engineer Lee and Mr. Gunn expressed concerns over unlicensed foreign plumbers operating in Singapore. It is illegal for foreigners to work in Singapore without a valid work pass. Foreign plumbers with valid work passes that wish to practice in Singapore will need to be licensed. Let me emphasize that consumers who engage the services of unlicensed plumbers do so at their own risk. Plumbing systems have a significant impact on the quality of tap water and on public health. Enforcement action will be taken against the unlicensed plumber and the consumer. I urge consumers when hiring plumbing services to go to the Register of Licensed Water Service Plumbers on PUB's website or call PUB's 24-hour call centre at 1-800-CALL-PUB to find these plumbers or verify their status. This register will be expanded to cover all licensed plumbers once the new scheme is implemented. Licensed plumbers will also be required to carry an authorised license card from PUB for verification. Engineer Lee also brought up licensed plumbers subcontracting works to non-licensed plumbers. While licensed plumbers can do so,
they must directly supervise and sign off on the works carried out by the unlicensed plumber. Should there be any non-compliance with the requirements and standards stipulated by POB, the licensed plumbers who signed off on the works would be held responsible. More even, importantly, even as we enhance the regulatory system, POB will work with the Singapore Plumbing Society to enhance consumer education so that consumers will be aware of the importance of using licensed plumbers for critical plumbing works. Ms. Pereira suggested encouraging licensed plumbers to develop specialised skills in specific fields of work. While the licensed plumber scheme requires plumbers to be proficient in both water and sanitary plumbing works, they are free to elect the field of work that they wish to practice in. Currently, to help consumers make a better choice when engaging a plumber, the Register of Licensed Water Service Plumbers on POB's website also indicates the type of services that some plumbers are offering. When the new scheme takes effect, PUB will extend the listing of types of services offered for sanitary plumbing on the Register of Licensed Plumbers on PUB's website as well. Engineerly asked whether the courses offered at ITE are continually reviewed to keep pace with industry needs. The courses offered are in accordance with Singapore's current plumbing standards, and PUB will continue to work with educational institutions like ITE and BCA Academy to ensure their courses keep pace with industry needs. To answer Mr Ng, licensed plumbers are also required to attend PUB's refresher courses once every three years to be kept abreast of the latest industry standards. To conclude, the amend amendments to this bill are an important step forward to ensure that Singaporeans continue enjoying clean and safe water. Therefore, I call on members of the House to give their support to this bill.